Hello everyone and welcome to Epinsico and uh, today we'll be discussing a few of the important questions which are asked during the interviews in Appian. As promised we will be also discussing the answers although they won't be the exact answer what the interviewer is expecting but uh, this would highlight the key important points which are required to answer in a good manner. So let's move forward with our first question that is what is the difference between optimizing performance through admin console and through interface object as you know that while opening the appian administration console we have a section called monitoring and under monitoring we have rule performance rule performance basically give you the insight of uh, all the objects within appian environment like uh, how many times that object has been executed what is the average time taken or what is the minimum time taken so it gives you the whole you know uh, list of objects basically which uh, help you identify that uh, how objects are performing within the whole app environment it also helps you to monitor resource allocation like uh, how many resources have been allocated and uh, how many app engines has been allocated so it's it also gives you the insight for that but most importantly it's give you the insight of uh, complete environment which you can monitor now coming on to the interface object in the interface object basically we have a performance tab which gives you the insight about evaluation metrics save metrics and query metrics like uh, it helps you uh, monitor each and every query calls and the query rules along with the functions what you are calling and how much time they are taking what is the average time taking right but it is only relevant to a specific interface object whereas while we are optimizing the performance through admin console it uh, gives you the insight of uh, the complete environment so that's few of the key points which i have discussed about uh, how we are optimizing performance through admin console and uh, through interface objects and what exactly are the difference between them now moving forward with our next question that is what is the difference between long lived process and the short lived process and when do we use them so you might have encountered few scenarios where we are working on large process models so ideally those are long lived process not exactly but yeah up to some extent they are ideal for multiple step workflows so let's say in my process model i have a scenario where i need multiple approvals for uh, where at various stages basically uh, that would be a long lived process and uh, where the human interaction is required so human approves the process will be in the active state right we use long lived process where we require to implement the complex workflows basically now moving on to our short lived process so whenever we have uh, some quick execution we do use short lived process mostly they are used for the automated task let's say if you are writing directly into a table or into a record you can create a separate mo uh, process model just for that and you can use that sub process model into uh, another process model using sub processes right so that would be a short lived process we use them basically for quick data processing long lived process remains active for a longer time and short lived process remains active for a shorter period of time that are few key differences between them now moving on further with our next question that is how two environment can be configured for compare and deploy method used for deployments so if you move on to our appian admin console in our devops section we have a heading called infrastructure where we can uh, configure two different environments and uh, we can also monitor and uh, send packages along different environment basically so for that you need to add new environment you can get those credentials if you have two environment you can try setting them up but that's the uh, place where you are setting two different environment which can be used for compare and deploy method at the back end uh, they might be appian is creating a ci cd pipeline for compare and deploy method which you don't have to worry about it will create it automatically but uh, for that you need to configure uh, the infrastructure section and uh, you need to add new environments over here now moving on further with our next question that is 
what is the difference between tomcat logs and performance log so you can find the tomcat logs and the other performance log basically under the system logs if you are using a cloud environment basically you will find them under say, system logs but if you are using a on premise environment that uh, in that case there would be a different place where you will find those performance log and the tomcat log so under system logs basically if you see a heading over here perf logs basically and tomcat logs so you'll find them over under system logs and the difference between them is like um, whenever any um, environment or the server where the environment is hosted it is starting and shutting down those details you can find on the tomcat log and uh, some of the deployment error by which you might be facing that can be also found on the tomcat logs and uh, sometimes you might have encountered that uh, it gives some sort of java exception error basically so you can also trace them under tomcat logs now moving on to our performance log or i would say perf log whenever you want to find the request or response time for a specific user you can find that under perf log you can also find like the process or the rule execution time and uh, how much time it is taking to you know query the data from the database and uh, all those performance you can find under the performance log so these are few key points which you can mention to identify the differences between tomcat logs and the performance log now moving on further to our next question that is how would you delete all the documents in apn which are older than 2 years considering we are not storing the document id in the data so it's a scenario based question what we have encountered over here that uh, if we are not storing any of the document ids within our database then how would we identify you know that we need to delete these documents which are older than 2 years so for that we have a smart service called delete document created before date so over here you need to mention the folder you need to mention the date exact date where from which you want to delete and uh, what would be the batch size and uh, the quick mode should be on or not so those sort of configuration you need to do under this delete document created before date is smart sub so moving on further with our next question that is a third party wants to trigger one of our stored procedure and how will you implement that functionality okay so it is also a scenario based so what we will do over here is we will create a web api of uh, start process type that web api would trigger a process model okay and uh, we would give those give the end point basically to the third party and uh, along with the authentication method which can be api key authentication so that uh, configuration we need to provide to the third party and they will call this apn web api which we have created and inside this web api we have mapped our process model so inside that process model we need to use the execute stored procedure smart service and the way we would configure the stored procedure which the third party wants to trigger uh, within app so that would be the implementation what we will be using to mitigate this scenario now moving on further with our next question that is difference between process start form and user input task and which is better in terms of performance you might have encountered we can map interfaces within our process model at two different places that is one is process start form and other is user input task process start form is configured over the start event of any process model and uh, user input task is configured with between the nodes of the process model right so the difference i think you might already know but uh, in terms of performance uh, process start form is better because it allows the process model to be started once the form has been submitted and there is also a less waiting time which uh, has been observed uh, while using the process start form along with it it uses less resource like a less amu apn memory unit because the process model hasn't been triggered yet 
and uh, it is basically a one time interaction and uh, it is also ideal for one time interactions like we are using the user input task which is which can be configured at a multiple multiple places within the process model these are the points which help you identify that process restart form is better in terms of performance so moving on further with our next question how will you do a custom error handling in an integration object and how will you show a custom message based on the status code so let's say we have a scenario where we are calling one of the third party api and we are using the integration object and within the integration object if you scroll down we have a section called error handling most of the time we are using the def default error handling until we have a scenario where we want to use the custom error messages and we want to show it to the user so for that you need to select override and define all error conditions and uh, within the success criteria you need to mention that when this should be triggered so over here i have mentioned that uh, the status code should be equal to 500 that is internal server error and uh, once the status code is received as 500 only then show the custom error message what uh, i'll be displaying it to the user so that's how you can do the custom error handling within the integration object so moving on further with our next question there is a huge amount of data in some third party system and i want to use it in our appian application how can i do that so for that uh, there are two things like if you are using the cdt based approach within your existing project in that case i would suggest you to go with the integration object and uh, call that data and use that integration object inside a process model or wherever where you can store that data inside your database like one of the best way which you can handle this one is using the record type implementation and which appian also recommends that you can create your record with the web service method inside the web service method you can you need to create a integration and before creating an integration you need the connected system for that and you need to configure the data source for that so this would be the ideal approach to fetch huge amount of data within appian from a third party system it is ideal because it also allows you to sync all the data because the record type what you will be creating with the help of web service that would be a sync record type and uh, it will also sync the data within batching so that is the configuration which you will be doing while creating this record so that's it for today and uh, hopefully we'll see you in our next video for appian interview questions thank you for watching